okay this is a story here courtesy of the guardian it says Reverend Rachel Wood and four other women accused Marilyn Manson of abuse Manson describes the allegations as horrible distortions of reality after the record label drops him from their roster so um this of course is another uh, another one I guess this isn't much of a surprise if you are a big Marilyn Manson fan, which I am. Right, I had my Marilyn Manson phase when I was in secondary school, and I kind of followed his career from afar ever since then. Even though I, you know I've kind of stopped maybe listening to his music as much as I did in the past, but these rumors a bit about him being abusive to women always existed, but for some reason they never kind of gained any traction. But of course, in a post Me Too world, um, you know issues of uh, female abuse are definitely met with a lot more. I definitely take it a lot more seriously than they were in the past and um i guess in this case with ever rachel wood she's always had a bit of a she's always sort of put out stories or said things that you could interpret as they being an indication of something what untoward happened in her relationship with marilyn manson so when she did finally come out and basically name him as her abuser everyone was kind of like oh i, I knew it right because if you followed her career uh, or if you followed marilyn manson and you know who evan rachel wood is you would know that she has been saying you know without saying in between words you know that this guy basically you know has been an abuser for a very very long time and i guess now she feels crazy enough to say it so let's read through the the story and i'll give you my opinion on the other side it says here um evan rachel wood has accused her former partner marilyn manson of years of horrific abuse in an instagram post the actor wrote the name of my abuser is brian warner also known to the world as marilyn manson he started grooming me when i was a teenager and horrifically abused me for years i was brainwashed manipulated into submission i am done living in fear of retaliation slander and blackmail i'm here to expose this dangerous man and call out the many industries that have enabled him before he ruins anymore i stand with the many victims who will no longer be silent so a very straight to the point um statement there you know highlighting exactly who it was pointing the finger at who she thinks is responsible and basically saying i'm not going to rest until you are um, held, res held responsible for your actions it continues for other women ashley walters sarah mcnally um ashley morgan and gabriella with no surname given have alleged abusive behavior via instagram posts mcnally and walters allege physical and emotional abuse including behavior they characterize as torture morgan alleges sexual and physical violence and coercion gabriella alleges rape physical violence that manson forced her to take drugs jesus christ described the manson's crime delegation as a horrible torture of reality in a statement shared on instagram he said obviously my art and my life have been um, magnets for controversy but these recent claims about me are horrible torture of reality my intimate relationship have always been entirely consensual with like-minded partners regardless of how and why others are now choosing to misrepresent the past that is the truth the guardian has contacted the representative of mason's um, company and record label Manson has categorically denied and previously allegations of sexual abuse made by anonymous women to 18. We remember that one dating back to 2011, um, which was thrown out due to the absence of corroboration and the statute of limitations being expired. Manson's lawyer had called the allegations completely delusional. After today's allegations, Manson's record label Loma Vista Recordings dropped him from its roster. Loma Vista will cease to further promote the current album effective immediately. Due to these concerning developments, we have also decided not to work with Marilyn Manson on any future projects. I wonder what's happening with record labels. I wonder if it's always been a contract um clause in there that if you get involved in something it must be right because artists are crazy and they do dumb things it must just be a clause that they've always had in record labels where if you do anything dumb that maybe uh puts the label in a bad light they can immediately drop you because there must be some legal recourse to it right especially if they've invested money or you invested time i don't know i wonder if that's or maybe because they're the lender they have more hearsay it's just interesting that labels are much quicker nowadays to drop people than they were in the past it feels like it feels like in the past labels were the last people to drop you and they're the ones that were getting the most hassle online but they just wouldn't because it's hard to it's hard to attack a record label because it's faceless isn't it there's no one person that you can basically attack your eye to so this is interesting but regardless it goes on uh wood and manson began dating in 2017 uh or 2007 sorry when she was 19 years old and he was 37 she inspired his 27 um 2007's here heart shape uh, glass uh song when the heart guides the hand their relationship ended in 20 2008 manson told an interview in 2009 i have fantasies every day about smashing her skull in sledgehammer leash and said that he'd self-harmed following the breakup they reconciled got engaged 2010 and split again later that year in 2018 wood appeared 
year before the US um, Judicial Committee amid campaign for 2016 um, Bill of Rights Act to be inducted, enacted across the US and detailed her experiences of various forms of abuse. Oh yeah, I remember this from an unnamed person. Yeah, that's when I think a lot of people, when they saw her speaking, came to the conclusion that it was definitely Marilyn Manson. Um, so no one can say that she's suddenly invented these stories. She's definitely been feeling like this for a while. She said that in the wake of the attack, she was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress order and had self harm and attempted suicide. All the four of the other women who alleged abuse against Manson say they have been suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder. In 2019, Wood testified at the California Senate Council Polit uh, Public Safety Committee in support of the bill expanding the rights of victims of domestic violence she said an unnamed abuser who met her in her late teens made threats against her life sometimes with deadly weapons amid allegations uh, of domestic abuse in which um, he also tortured and starved her surveilled her phone usage and threatened her with blackmail manson was questioned about the testimonies in an interview of metal hammer in 2020 and cut the interview short a press representative later said ever rachel wood dated multiple people around that time she dated manson and the sledgehammer comment was ob obviously a theatrical rock star interview promoting his new record not a factual account they complained of gossip and conjecture and highlighted a 2015 interview in wood in which he said mansion appreciate everything he taught me wood said in 2018 a lot of rumors have been circulated about um, who i was talking about in my testimony i'd like to clear up some things it wasn't ricky rourke we were never together <laughs> that's really funny in 2018, uh, Manson also accused of accused harassing women on the set of TV drama House, which he did not comment on in 21, 2001. He was charged with assault. Da, da, da. Yeah, since his 2019 debut, Manson has endured a career of, car of a cartoonishly gothic metal. Nine of his 11 studio albums have reached the US top 10. Most recently, We Are Cursed in September 2020, with 1998's Mechanical Animals, 2013's Golden Age of Grotesque reaching number one. So, of course, Horrendous allegations, right? Stuff that you can never really co-sign or endorse in any way, shape or form. But it did get me thinking about um, the future of artistry and, you know, people in general, creatives. You do get the feeling that the new world that we're sort of moving into, there's going to be less and less freaks and weirdos, right? Because it's no surprise when you hear the story about Marilyn Manson, right? Whether or not it's true or not, hearing the story, you're not taken aback. It's not like, oh my God, he did what? This makes complete sense. If you follow his career, you watch his interviews, you listen to his music, um, you see how he conducts himself in public, it would make sense that he would be this kind of guy to women, right? Um, so if that's the case, it, it, is there something to be said for, you can only be that level of artist if you've got that level of darkness inside of you, where you're willing to abuse or physically and mentally somebody that you supposedly love for a very very long period of time or for an intense period of time, especially a year when you're 19 and it's your first love right it's so intense i can only imagine so there's definitely something about that there's definitely something about these individuals who operate at that high level of artistry that seem to have this level of darkness in them that they simply can't shake so what i'm basically saying is is it possible to be a good person and be a very a great artist, a sort of once in a generation artist, an artist that inspires a legion of other artists in your field and other artists outside of your genre. Is that possible? Or do we kind of have to get to a place in the world where we accept that some of our more um, out there people are going to be a little bit weird and they're going to do weird shit, but you just can't judge it through the prism of what normal people do because they're not normal. Right, I don't think Marilyn Manson's ever lived a normal life. He's always kind of um, operated on the outskirts of society. I remember what what podcast I listened to recently where someone just said like he just does coke every day nowadays. He's just allegedly it's what I've heard again allegedly. Um, somebody said in the podcast that he just does coke. He just racks lines up every day, gets smashed, and just wanders around taking bumps all the time. That's all he does. And if that's the case. And he's been doing this, you know, for decades on prior. Again, like I said about the Octavian thing, his record label were aware, his management people were aware, production people he works with were aware, his close musical collaborators were aware, but they all turned a blind eye because he was just so fantastic in this other field. So I don't know, man, there's part of me that thinks it's bad. Don't get me wrong, it is really bad, but this might just be a prerequisite of having great art. You're just always gonna, your personal life is always gonna be somewhat clouded in darkness. And unfortunately, fortunate, hopefully, you don't have 
a trail of victims behind you once you do leave this earth or once things go on uh but it's definitely likely there's going to be a trail of people that you hurt along the way and i don't know whether it's just a, a fact of just knowing once you get in a relationship or once you stand next to this person that this might happen to you your life might never be the same or whether it's an education for the fans to realize that hey you can't judge this person through the prism of your normal people eyes it has to be always judged through the prism of artistry because to be an artist of that level you just maybe have to have that chaotic and frantic life that you can kind of pull from to inform your music maybe who knows maybe i'm right maybe i'm wrong i don't know just throwing out an opinion out there don't hate me